Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this post-mortem of my Blitz game number 653. My opponent kicked off with d4. I went with uh, knight of three, knight of six rather, and he goes knight c3, a bit of an unusual move, not uh, c4, the main move, or knight f3, the, the second choice, or even bishop g5, the, uh, uh, what is that, the Trumposki. But uh, knight c3, the fourth choice here, and this can introduce some different ideas, um, and uh, I wasn't really sure what uh, what my opponent had planned here. And it's often the case when your opponent plays a, a rare move in the opening, you should just follow your basic opening principles and uh, uh, put another pawn in the center. And that's what I did here, and it turned out to be the top choice in the database as well. So we get this position, which uh, also could have arisen by d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6. That's uh, probably the more common move order, and in that move order. I might have recognized this move more quickly. It took me a while to re remember the name of this. This is the uh, Black Mardemer Gambit. Of course, this uh, play with knight c3 doesn't have to lead to the Black Mardemer Gambit. That's just one idea. Uh, you could go with this uh, bishop g5 idea here. And this is, uh, in a way, it's playing something like the Chagorin defense uh, to the Queen's Gambit, but with colors reversed. It's an interesting way to play. Um, I can't think of the name of it. It's got a name. Uh, but uh, sometimes a bishop will take the knight and uh, mess up the pawn structure. So white in that line with bishop g5 is playing for uh, activity with his pieces, gets his knights out, and tries to damage uh, black's pawn structure and doesn't mind giving up the bishop pair. Anyway, that's a different way to play. He went with um, e4, the black Mardemer gambit, and um, not an especially good gambit, so you should probably just take that pawn. But if you know the French defense and don't mind uh, playing that then and you want to avoid the gambit you can just play e6 here and uh and get a get a normal position from the french defense um another way to play it also avoiding the gambit is with c6 although i don't know i mean i've heard people i've been told that uh if you play the caro Khan that c6 is okay but i haven't ever played that myself but e6 i would i would definitely be willing to play that here um anyway taking the pawn though as i said is okay and then uh, white plays f3. That's the idea of the black mar Um The original gambit actually was the black mar gambit, and uh, in that line, uh, the knights didn't come out, but it was just d4, uh, d5, e4, pawn takes e4, and f3 right away. And it just turns out that uh, in that line, um, e4 is a good move. So there's ways to... Uh, counteract it, but it doesn't work so well here with the knights out. So that's that's the why those knights come out first, and then, then uh, white goes for the gambit. Um, and um, you can take the pawn, just to show you. The idea of the gambit is just to get quick development. He's got uh, open lines here, he's got his knights out, and um, yeah, probably bishop f5 here is one of the better moves. Black also needs to develop quickly and watch out for a king side attack. Um, and this is an okay position for black. Black should be better here. But it's also the kind of position that the uh, Black Mardemer Gambit player is looking for. This is what they, uh, the kind of position they, they have in mind when they play the Gambit. So you're kind of giving them what they want if you go that way. So that's why I choose the second move here, bishop to f5. And now if they take the pawn, which actually happened in the game, the, the real idea here is to take back with the knight. And the thing is, um, you've won this pawn without giving white that extra tempo of development. So basically, white has no uh, compensation or very little compensation for the pawn here. And, you know, after queen f3, trying to embarrass your pieces, you can escape with uh, knight takes c3. So this is uh, okay. I guess white has a choice of which piece he wants to take back. But in any case, uh, black stays a pawn up and, uh, and white is better. If... Uh, if uh, white chooses to take the bishop, by the way, you can kick the queen first, and then after the after the queen moves, then you could rescue the knight. Um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, the knight can the knight can hop back to this this square here because of that uh, e6 move. So a nice little trick to know. Um, but that is um, how I should have played that. Instead, I was still uh, thinking, trying to remember the name of the gambit, and I played this move, uh, bishop to g6, kind of reflexively. So that's a mistake, and now uh, now white has got everything that he wanted out of the opening. He's got uh, the open f-file for his later kingside attack. He's got better center control, and uh, he's 
development, he's actually one move behind in development compared to a normal position because it's my turn to move here. But um, well, I, actually, I'm going to have to do a pawn move too. So yeah, he hasn't sacrificed development. He's just got those advantages and no deficits. He's got the advantage of the pawn center and the open f file. I don't have any easy way to exploit the uh, open kink position at the moment. So uh, so White's in great shape here because of because of my mistake retreating that bishop. Um, anyway, he continues uh, with logical development, and that's what we get for the next few moves. Both sides castle. And um, then he goes for queen e1. Queen e1 is a bit of a mistake. Uh, let's see, the chess engine wants to just push on with e5 right away and uh, kind of displace my pieces. It also wants to trade off this uh, bishop. And um, I would have taken with the h-pawn probably, and then knight e4. And now yeah, this is looking like a pretty dangerous attack brewing here with these pieces ready to hop into the uh, g5 square. Um, the queen ready to come over to the uh, king side. And my pieces are, um, you know, it'll take some time to bring them into play. So this is looking good for white. Um, so that would have been um, that would have been the way to play it. Uh, let's see. The chess engine wants me to defend by taking uh, with the f-pawn, which I guess... Uh, in retrospect, it makes some sense here. I'm opening up the F file and trying to counterattack or counteract the pressure of his rook on the F file. Uh, the, but the knight can still come in, and, and seems like White is better in this position as well. So Queen E1 uh, gives uh, you know he's just trying to maneuver his queen over, but it's a bit of a slow move. Gives me time to counterattack in the center. Great recipe for meeting a uh, flank attack is to counterattack in the center. And it, uh, it's uh, a good move in this case. And then his next move here is a real blunder. So before this move, it's the position is about equal. And after this move, uh, black is winning. So first of all, can you spot the tactic here? Yeah, I'm sort of surprised uh, looking at it now that I missed this during the game. <laughs> Didn't even realize that I had missed it. But uh, yeah, queen takes. Queen takes pawn is much better than pawn takes because it's a check. And the knight is loose there, so that just wins a piece. Uh, anyway, I took with the pawn. I'm still better here because I'm just up a pawn, and he doesn't have uh, any compensation. He trades off for the uh, he trades off my bishop for his knight. And then, um, yeah, I was wondering later if I could have uh, taken his knight instead of taking this knight, but that doesn't work because if I take this knight, he can just grab my rook and uh, come out ahead materially. So I did have to take this knight. And so I, I have to suffer some pawn damage, but I am a pawn up, and uh, and there's no uh, problem getting my pieces out. Let's see. He went on with e5, and now rather than moving my knight, um, I decided to take off his knight. I think this is a, a good choice. I don't want to allow my pieces to get displaced, and I don't want this pawn to survive here on, uh, on e5, cramping my position. So now he's forced to take... And then uh, he has to take back with a pawn since my bishop is on this square. He can't take with the queen. So I've, I'm a pawn up and I've damaged his queenside pawns. He still has the advantage of the bishop pair and I still have to develop my knight. But that should not be uh, too big a problem to deal with and, and black is just uh, better here. So I went uh, with queen a5 first, taking a look at this pawn. And um, I wasn't quite sure how to develop my knight yet, so I was trying to... Uh, <laughs> kind of ask him what he wanted to do next. Uh, he defends the pawn with bishop to d2. So now I decided to bring the knight out like this, knight to c6. I figure it needs to come over to the king's side, and I, maybe I can do a route like this. I think that's what happens in the game. Um, he goes queen g3 now, abandoning his pawn, and um, but going for the king side attack, which has kind of been his motif so far. And I just moved my knight. I could actually have taken the uh, pawn here and gotten away with it. This would have been okay. There's no no great discoveries here. If uh, he takes and queen takes, this uh, bishop can't move with check. We have to be careful about little things like that. So that would have been all right. But I was more interested, I guess, in uh, bringing a piece over to defend the king side. He pushes on with h4, trying to disrupt my pawn cover. But now you can see um, these extra pawns are going to come in handy because I, have, I can uh, trade them off, and he doesn't have enough pawns to uh, destroy my pawn cover. Let's see, but I, I continue with knight f5, hitting his queen, hitting the, the pawn over here, so he decides to trade it off. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I'm just noticing, 
Oh, no, I couldn't take with the queen. I can't take with the queen because his rick is on it. So I take with the pawn. So these pawns are kind of funny looking, but they do. Uh, I have four against two over here, so that will be an asset in the long run. Um, he went with uh, bishop to g5 and really giving up the pawn this time. So I went ahead and took it. And then he played queen h2, just avoiding the queen trade, which uh, if he wants to have any kind of attack, that's what he needs to do. If he doesn't have an attack, then I'm just going to be a pawn up. So uh, he needs to try and play for that. So uh, there's another tactic here that I missed. So if you want to uh, pause the video at this point, see if you can spot the tactic. What's uh, Black's best move here? Okay, uh, I'm going to give the answer away now. The move is queen to c5 check. Yeah, you just get the queen out of the way of the bishop, so it's hitting the rook in the corner. And you do it with tempo by delivering that check to the king and just wins the exchange. So that would be uh, the best way to proceed here. But uh, the move I played is not bad either. Giving up the queen for two rooks uh, in this position turns out to be good for black. You always have to be a little careful with this. Uh, uh, but on an open board, as long as your queen king rather has sufficient shelter, the, the two rooks can... Uh, coordinate and, and sometimes overpower a queen. They can pile up on any individual target. They're just a little bit clumsier, so you have to make sure they don't get caught in any sudden forks where they can't uh, defend themselves. And of course, you have to watch out that your king doesn't get caught in a fork when your opponent is going to have the queen flying around over this open board. But in general, the, the rooks are pretty strong in this kind of position. Um, so let's see, he pushed on with h5, and I took it. He takes back. And you can see I still have two pawns in front of my king. So uh, my king is still pretty secure here. Let's see, I went with the uh, bishop d4 check. Goes king f1. And uh, I go rick to the e-file. So I already have ideas of counterattacking his king. Um, queen comes to f3, and I line up my rooks on the e-file. I didn't mind losing this pawn, and this turns out to be a good decision. Even the chess engine approves that... Um, you know, giving up that pawn is is uh, a no uh, easy price to pay for this. Uh, uh, it's a light price to pay for the uh, the benefit of uh, controlling the e-file here and uh, being able to threaten mates. So he can't take another pawn. He has to come back and defend in some way. He tried um, defending with g3. I come in here with the rook. King goes to g2, and then I go rook here. And this doesn't have to be a forced mate. He could still have escaped over here to h3, and uh, the game would have come on, continued. Uh, the chess engine wants to play rook takes c2 with the idea, well, first of all, the, uh, the rook is guarding this square, so there's no check and take pawn. Um, and then secondly, say the queen comes out to harass the bishop, the idea is to double the rooks along the second rank, and now there's a mate threatened here. And uh, let's see, he can't... Uh, defend the mate by taking the bishop, but he can defend the mate by taking the pawn, and then it would continue from here, but uh, black is better. I guess I can mop up pawns over here. Nothing is hanging at the moment, although still have to be careful about checks. <laughs> anyway, um, it would be a longer game if he had played that way, but he, uh, he ran to f3 with his king, and now there is a nice mate in one, which I found this tactic finally, and uh, this is a great pattern to know. Notice I'm not even using this rook. The only pieces involved are the pawn, the bishop, and the rook. And they're covering all of these squares around the king. And uh, the uh, only square that's not covered by my pieces is uh, blocked by his pawn here. So the, the uh, combination of bishop, rook, and pawn here cover all the squares around the king, except for this one on the side. So it's a nice little mating pattern to know. Um, okay, well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.